Hi, everyone. My name is Catherine. I serve at Adult Options and Education, and my pronouns are she, her. And I'm just going to introduce the project me, um, Mackenzie, and Sophie did, which is titled Job Search Help for the Formerly Incarcerated. Um, just to provide some context of why we picked this project, um, as you may or may not know, it can be really hard for people just coming out of um, prison to successfully find a job. In fact, a statistic we found from 2005 that says almost half of formerly incarcerated individuals have been rearrested within three years. So this is you know, a project that is pertinent and important, especially since organizations with a focus on this community are sparse. Um, in fact, it is more likely that people that have been um, recently released from jail or prison are usually pretty unfamiliar with newer technologies, platforms, social norms, and it can be really hard to learn all of these things all at once, um, especially without guidance um, and support. Hi, my name is Sophie. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I serve at St. Paul Public Libraries, at the St. Paul Public Library System. Um, right now, I'm just going to give us a brief overview of what our project was to meet um, the goals. Uh, so we ended up working with RS Eden, which is a nonprofit organization based in St. Paul um, in the West 7th neighborhood that helps formerly incarcerated people with reentry. Um, assists with substance use disorders and helps sets people up with housing. We also learned during our project that they're also a point, a place where people stay before they go into prison. Um, so we compiled resources in a shared drive and shared it with RS Eden. Um, this includes videos, links, worksheets, PDFs, templates, all um, providing resources to formerly incarcerated individuals um, in their job search and technical um, and digital literacy skills. Um, and then we set up a drop-in workshop at West 7th Street Library um, to provide one-on-one -on -one career counseling. Good morning, everyone. My name is Mackenzie. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I currently serve at Film North in St. Paul. I apologize if I sound a little froggy. I'm fighting off COVID, um, but I'm gonna go over kind of the scope of our project. Um, we really broke it down into three different big sections. Um, preparing for the job search was one workshop. Uh, financial wellness workshop was uh, an additional workshop. And then the job search workshop itself. Um, we felt as we started doing research into this topic that there were so many moving parts um, and so many barriers and obstacles placed in front of people who were formerly incarcerated who are now trying to look for, for work upon release. Um, so we felt that it might be easiest just to break that down into bite-sized pieces. Um, so preparing for the job search talks about how to replace important identification documents, um, you know, like your social security card, your driver's license, birth certificate, anything that you would need um, to, in order to apply for a job, in order to apply for any kind of line of credit through a financial institution. Um, anything quite like that. And then this workshop additionally also went over how to create an email address. Um, the financial workshop talks a lot about important terms um, and keywords, um, talks a lot about common banking and housing scams to look out for, comparative banking and credit options, an overview of housing resources, and really has an emphasis on knowing your rights. Last week, we come to the job search workshop, which is talks often or talks a lot about making a job search plan, preparing for an interview, uh, creating a resume. And I know that Catherine worked really hard on this workshop as well to have an emphasis of really knowing your rights as you um, progress through the um, the resume and the the interview phase of the job search. And then just additionally, we have a bunch of compiled links and workshops that are in that shared drive, as Sophie mentioned. All right, so the aspect of preparing for the job search was um, something I more or less covered um, in the research rep repository and um, workshops. Um, so the first crucial part was setting up an email. Um, not a lot of computers, not a lot of computer access for 
incarcerated adults and computers at reentry centers. Um, looking to provide more accessible options and walkthroughs through our um, workshops and uh, videos in our uh, repository, our research repository. And another thing that uh, emails and setting up emails often require cell phone access and digital navigation to other barriers that come up. And then the second part um, for preparing for the job search, uh, IDs. So finding important oftentimes in when an individual enters prison, they can lose uh, very important documents. So getting those documents is a key step in uh, sort of like reestablishing um, after and during reentry. So finding places for these for individuals to get uh, important documents like birth certificates and using these docs to get IDs. Um, the social security re card replacement website isn't uh, very intuitive. So that is a part of our digital navigation walkthrough. Amazing. So um, the financial wellness workshop was the workshop that I worked most closely with. Um, and the it addresses really two major barriers that I found that reoccurred when I was doing more research about the reentry process, which was um, getting established financially and then also finding secure housing. Um, these seem to be two major barriers that tended to cause, um, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? Um, Reincarceration, I suppose, is the best word I can think of this. Um, this workshop was split up into two sections. Thank you, Sophie. Recidivism, that was the word. I know it started with an R. Um, it was broken up into two different sections. The, the finance section, which highlighted important terms and keywords, um, just in case for some people who went in um, and did have any prior experience working with any kind of banking institution or some terms that maybe are much newer now that there are much more frequent uh, scams, both on digital platforms. Um, so kind of updating that. And then I walk through a bunch of comparative banking options um, and we talk about common scams to be aware of as well. Um, in the second part of this workshop, we talk about housing, um, really focusing on what options are available, both as you're in the reentry process and then once you are ready to strike out on your own. We talk a lot about um, whether to rent or not to rent, what to look for when you're renting, um, how to build a budget if you're considering renting, um, and then also really highlight common scams to be aware of. Um, a big emphasis in my workshop was just for anybody who's going through this process to know that you're, to know what their rights are um, and to be aware of, of all the options that are available to them because they are kind of hard to find. Um, and as Catherine had mentioned earlier, you know, a lot of programming around this is, is pretty sparse. So that was a big emphasis in my. Um, the biggest resource that I use while putting together this workshop was the adult pre-release handbook um, through the Department of Corrections. It is a very, very thorough um, kind of uh, workbook that has a ton of great information, a ton of great leads. Um, but then in addition to this, I also used um, government websites and other reputable outlets to support my information. Yeah, and that just brings us to the job search. I broke up this workshop into five different sections, starting the job search, what are your rights, your limitations, um, coming into the workforce as someone who has been formally incarcerated, how to job search, what is your plan, job fair, networking, making a resume, how do you best structure a resume with a gap in it with um, functional versus chronological resumes, um, interviews, what are inter illegal interview questions? How do you um, how do you talk about your conviction in an interview? And there are act there are some government incentives for employers to hire people that have been formally incarcerated. And going through what these are and how to mention those in your interview or um, employment process. Um, for this workshop, um, I use North Star Online Learning Career Search Curriculum to kind of structure it to organize it. Um, and I also used CareerWise Minnesota as a resource to ensure that information 
about convictions, employment was accurate, helpful. Um, and we also included this worksheet in our resource um, depository that Sophie put together. All right, so concluding our project, the reality and hosting the workshop. So we were able to host a resume and career help workshop um, in conjunction with RS Eden at West 7th Library in early July. Um, six participants were scheduled to attend. Um, we worked with these adults, uh, formerly incarcerated adults, um, to when navigating computers and applying for jobs um, and made sure to provide this repository, this evergreen resource repository as our student does not have computers or computer class options. Um, and through this workshop, we were able to also learn more um, that we, more information that we didn't get online, such as a direct quote from a participant, you can't apply for cashier positions as a felon, which was something that did not come up in our research. Um, just to kind of wrap us up regarding next steps, um, things that we took away from this experience, we definitely saw an identifiable need within the community um, and a, a, a big need for this tangible service, this one-on-one -on -one career counseling. Um, in conversations with Sophie, it seems like this is going to hopefully become a legacy program at the West, West 7th Street Library, um, getting participants hooked up with computer classes, which they had voiced interest in. Um, and also trying to set up residents with low cost computers through other organizations, um, something like PCs for People. Um, yeah. yeah. And that concludes our project. So yeah, any questions? Let's give, yeah, this group a round of applause. And as usual, uh, put your questions in the chat and then I will moderate those and ask them to the group and this group just <laughs> thank you for being here I know yeah it's been a tough week illness wise um Lisa says what an important and needed service do you have any to have a sense of the impact on those who attended workshops did they feel more confident in finding employment um I can feel that one so with the workshops and Mackenzie you can also if you want to chime in and add anything or with the workshop, we noticed that there was like um, a lot of wariness when it came to navigating the computers, especially with, um, I think individuals were applying for like government jobs too and federal resumes are a mess. So um, I think having somebody else there saying like, no, you're doing the right thing. Like, oh, let's like maybe try this a different way was uh, particularly helpful. And I think there was also kind of like a connection or human connection aspect that was really, um, I think afterwards we were like, yeah, that was great. Like we felt like we were able to connect with these patrons and, um, you know, provide some navigation in this <laughs> the confusing world of applying for jobs, especially, um, I mean, it's confusing just in general, right? So um, I think the impact was pretty um, apparent. Like there was like, like, uh, like people were able to apply for jobs, like multiple jobs at the time. Absolutely. And just chiming into um, an anecdote from my experience at the workshop, one of the participants I was working with had spent 18 years and just was recently released. And him and I had a long conversation about um, how your email address is different than an account that you make on a job website. And so I feel like Sophie and I encountered a lot of conversations like that, like just trying to explain these um, digital literacy not like pieces that you you and I might take for granted. So I think like Sophie said, the impact was pretty immediate when we saw that just having conversations um, with these participants. Um, yeah, and I, I mean, I think, I, Sophie, I don't wanna speak for you, but I think that the participants that I worked with that day definitely walked away feeling kind of a renewed sense of hope. Um, we're excited to hear that this was hopefully gonna be a continuing program um, and was looking forward to coming back to receive more assistance later on. Yeah, I will catch up, catch us up with the chat. Um, John says, you know, thank you for raising awareness of this need. Um, Allison, really critical point. 
having a navigator to support and cheer the person on. And then Leslie, comment and question. Great work, everyone. I'm curious, did you hear of any other organizations offering service in the Twin Cities that had a different approach or offered unique connections or resources? I don't want to uh, overstep, uh, but, and I can, we we made um, in our initial, the beginning of this present, uh, presentation project, um, we spent a lot of time trying to reach out to organizations that we knew were working with um, justice impacted adults and, or justice impacted individuals. And um, there are several banking options and um, organizations, um, such as that are like more within the reentry center. Our seat in is unique in that, or not, maybe not unique, but it it functions in that people can leave and they go to a job that is set up for them through our our seat in. But um, other places, people are still um, they have to stay at that location until they find a job. Um, and I think examples of that were Amicus, um, which is they have a Roseville and Lake Street location. Um, but it was, it's navigating that with, uh, finding those resources and finding those connections was actually a pretty substantial, um, it was, it was kind of difficult, but, um, but there, uh, we did find some, like, I know listening house in St. Paul, um, in, um, Dane's Bluff neighborhood, they, they work with people to get IDs. And um, that's actually set up with the the manager at West Seventh Library. He helps navigate that. But I hope that answers the question. 